What's going on everyone? It's Ben from YGO from Zero back with another retro Yu-Gi-Oh! video and this video is going to be looking at the deck that actually won the latest Warrior Format tournament, this sort of creator deck list piloted by M. Shobes. I think this list is really, really sick. A lot of interesting stuff going on here. A lot of the times when people play the creator, they play it in sort of a Reason Gate Turbo deck because it's a good monster if you can bring it out off a of special summon. But I do think that this list for it is actually kind of nicer. It's using a warrior package and just playing three creators, trying to draw into it. So this way, like, you're more likely to draw into creator. You've got the Rotas to get out the creator incarnate and bring one out from hand. And then you've got a bunch of powerful monsters that you can sort of leverage off the creator, just bring them back and being very good, like Dark Magician Chaos, get back a spell. BLS if, you know, they manage to clear your BLS. And even something like multiple Exiles Forces or multiple Mystic Swordsmen can be very good as well. So I think this sick list is really, really sick. A lot of interesting things going on. They got two books in the main. They got a Smash and Ground in the main as well. Uh, the upstart here to draw into your creators, things like that. So I really do like this list. I'm not really going to go through everything in this because, you know, I didn't build this deck. M. Shobes built it. And I do think that there's a lot of cool stuff going on. And I do like the choices. But if you do want to sort of Figure out why cards are in here. I think that playing it yourself sort of gives you an, an intuition for why things are in here um, versus other things. And the side deck's very good as well. You know, you got Cypher Soldier for Warriors. You got the Wangus for, like, Go Control and stuff. You've got Zambira as another searchable target off Rota. You know, you got Knock. You got the Mystic Walks. Uh, I maybe would go for Decrees over Walks against Burn decks, but I think that the Walks are fine. Destronado also for more back row heavy decks. Jinzo for Burn decks as well. So a lot of good stuff here. And of course, the Fusion deck is teched out in case, you know, uh, they've got a scientist or something. You know, you can take control of that and bring out Fusion Monsters here. But that's going to do it for the deck breakdown. Uh, let's just dive into some games and show off what this deck does. We've got our first game here against Ketcha YGO Official, a frequent guest on the channel. Always a pleasure to have them on. We are playing this creator deck list, and we will be going first. We open Confi, which is very nice. We draw a really good hand here, actually. We go for Confi, just get a peek of what they're playing. We see that they've got a Pot, a Confi, a Salvage, a Painful, and an Abyss Soldier. And that may not seem like the craziest hand in the world, but it actually is very strong. Because what they can do is they can Painful Choice, send a bunch of Waters, Salvage some back, and then they've got Fodder for Abyss Soldier there. So that's quite unfortunate. Uh, I do think we have to get rid of the Pot, just, you know, preventing them from getting two more cards. Although, there is very much an argument for sending Painful here. Because that painful just does so much for them and sets up so much. But I do like just getting rid of the unknown tier. And so I do just take the pot. But there definitely is a world in which you do go painful. And I think that is a respectable choice as well. But because we know they've got the coffee, what we're going to do is we're just going to set four. Set the creator incarnate. Doesn't get over, you know, a soldier either way. There is a world where they summon out Mother Grizzly and attack in anyways if they draw that off the top. So I'm fine just setting it here. If they do try and threaten the uh, Creator Incarnate with the Abyss Soldier, we do have the Book of Moon to set down the Abyss Soldier. So there's that. They go for Painful here, sending five good ones. You know, we could potentially give them, like, a non-Serpent card here, because if they go for Abyss Soldier, they've got to pitch that. But they've got Salvage anyways to bring back two cards for Abyss Soldier. So I figure that the Serpent is the best choice here. So I just give them the Serpent. They're going to get it back eventually. And I do think that it is correct. So... They're going to go for Salvage here, add two more again, you know. They get the fodder either way there. And, you know, if they could even add back the Serpent off Salvage, but either way, they're having three Water Monsters in hand. I'm giving them less options overall. But they're going to pitch the Serp to bounce back the Creator Incarnate hand, attack him with the Abyss Soldier here. And we got to think about this, we do just go for Book on the Abyss Soldier, so that way we can get over it with the Creator. They've got the Confi for our, the Creator Incarnate here, which is a bit unfortunate, but we draw another Rota. we got to think about this, we go for the Rota here. And since so we know it's in hand, and we know that, you know, Grizzly can get over Mystic Swordsman level 2, we actually search out another of the creator. This is a bit annoying, because we want to generally have that creator in deck, so that way, you know, we have potential uh, options to get into the creator at a moment's notice. But I do think it's just best to bring this out and hit over the Abyss Soldier. They don't have a clean out to the creator incarnate right now, especially after we forceful them. So we get to see their hand. We see they've got Penguin Soldier, Cyber Jar, and Mother Grizzly. I think of those, we just want to send back the Cyber Jar because that is the most annoying, can get out of hand the quickest. And we can deal with the other two if they set them. So we are just going to pass back to them. They add back a Serpent here. And unfortunately, they draw the Premat, which is very, very good for this deck. What they can do is they can Premat back the Abyss Soldier. Abyss Soldier, bounce back the Premat, use that Premat again, and get back a Mother Grizzly here. So this is not looking good for us. This one snatch shield is not going to do much against the face of this. So that is quite rough. Yeah, not much we could have really done there. We got Book, which won't really help us that much. But we can go for this 
reinforce the army, adding back a warrior lady here, and then hit over the grizzly. We can also snatch the abyss soldier there. We've got book to set it down um, to sort of get it back. So that's something. and Or not get it back, but prevent them from getting it. So that's pretty good. We'll set the book, try and bait out like removal that they might have. Um, they're going to add back this serpent here. And now they're just going to set one pass back to that. So unfortunately, the penguin soldier does indeed clear this. So that's kind of rough, um, even through the book. So we're just attacking to the penguin soldier just to get that back to hand and prevent them from having another body on field. But it's not looking good for us. They go for the abyss soldier here. They're going to pitch, bounce back our set. Again, we're just going to let it happen. We could have changed book potentially um, to set down the abyss soldier. But it is what it is, you know. We're just going to keep it. And I figure we can save the book for a better play later. We're going to set a TT and a book here, pass back to them. The reason for doing this is I want them to flip up the Abyss Soldier and, you know, trigger the TT. So this does play a little into Mobius, but, like, we got TT either way here. They do go for Mobius, so we're going to go for the TT here. And, yeah. And I couldn't leave the Abyss Soldier up in main, too, because then they could just bounce back one of our back row. So I had to go for the book beforehand. So either way, we were trading for two of our back row there. So I don't think it was the worst trade in the world. They summon out a Grizzly. They can attack in for 14. And it's looking pretty rough for us. And they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a pot, so hopefully they can draw us into something good. If we draw some way to revive our other creator incarnate, then we can get out the creator. We're going to go for an MST here. We're going to set this knock and a uh, call there. They've got another Mobius, then we lose, but we would have lost anyways. They bring out a Mother Grizzly here, and unfortunately, we do have to use the call now. It's not ideal, but we have to do it because otherwise we're just dead on board. So they attack in to the Creator Incarnate. They go for a Yomi ship there. They attack in to the Yomi ship, or uh, they attack in with the Yomi ship, that is, and pop the Creator Incarnate, get in for another 14. So unfortunately, we could not pull it off, so that way we could bring out the Creator here. We draw Zalug, which is okay. We can set the Zalug, rip a card at the hand if they attack into it with Grizzly, but they are just going to summon out this Sinister Serpent Creature Swap, and that will be the end of the game. So very, very good stuff there. Um... But, like, unfortunately, we just couldn't do it. You know, the pre-mat off the top was definitely very, very good. And, uh, you know, we just could not deal with that. And that's the power of the water deck. You know, it can do some pretty insane combos if it's got enough water fodder. So, hopefully, we can prevent them from getting that water fodder here. Now, there's a couple different options we could go for here. We go for the Creator Incarnate, bring out the Creator in defense and just leaving it at that. The reason I don't necessarily want to do that right now is because if they've got Abyss Soldier plus Fodder, then they just bounce back Creator. We've lost our progress there. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go for Warrior Lady. I could have also set the Fiber Jar instead to just shovel everything back and get aggressive on the following turn. But I figure we can save the Abyss, uh, the Fiber Jar for later. And they're going to bounce back with Abyss Soldier anyway. So they're going to get in for 18, and that will go through. I chose not to TT this, but we do have a way to clear the Abyss Soldier here. And that's actually really good. We're going to go for the Creator here. And now we're going to think about exactly what to do. We're going to pitch this Dark Magician of Chaos, get out the Creator Incarnate, just get more damage on board, and also set up Demok and Grave for later. We're going to attack over that Abyss Soldier, 4-5, and then attack in for 16 with the Creator Incarnate. And we're going to pass back to our opponent here. They're going to bring out a Tribe that will indeed be able to clear the board. And we got to think about whether we want to actually TT this. We choose not to because they don't seem to have Serpent because they probably pitch a Mobius here. And so I do think that, you know, we'll just let them discard here. And then next turn we can clear the tribe with like DD Warrior Lady or we can set Fiber Jar here. A lot of different options here. So they're going to pass back to us. We can draw Saku. Saku will also clear. So we're going to set the Warrior Lady, set the Saku, pass back to our opponent. They are going to think about this. They're going to attack into the Warrior Lady. And we're going to think about this and we will just Saku the tribe there. They're going to, or we're going to pass... No, they're passing back to us. That's how it goes. Uh, you, you commentate enough of these quickly enough, and it's very easy to mix up the turn order. Uh, we're just going to attack him with the Warrior Lady. Pass back to them. We could have summoned out the Mystic Swordsman, but it didn't change the clock, so no need to really do that. We draw Heavy Storm, but we don't necessarily want to commit that into the back row, especially when we've got this TT set. So they're going to fire the side, pass back to us. We could potentially set the Fiber Jar. I think in hindsight, that might have been the better option, but I fear that we've got a pretty good position that we're in here. But uh, unfortunately, we're just not drawing the things to make it happen. But uh, I do think that it's still pretty good for us. So we're just going to set the jar. Maybe it would have been better to go for um, the fiber jar. But they go for a pre-mat here. Bring back the Abyss Soldier. And we do have to TT that because if they Abyss Soldier back our TT, then that's annoying. Uh, if they Abyss Soldier back the pre-mat to get other things, that's annoying as well. So we go for an upstart here. Draw deeper. We go for an MST on the set. We go for Jar of Greed as well. And it is a tribe. So we bring out the tribe and attack in. This is a bit risky because tribe is a very powerful card. We might want to save it for later. But I think it's ultimately fine. We set the snatch deal here as a bluff and pass back to our opponent. They're going to set one. Go for Tayu. Just bouncing back that tribe to hand. Getting him for 750 here. 
And this is a bit annoying. We, they set two. And that, to me, indicates that they've got a Book of Moon set. Because there's no real reason why they do that otherwise. We're going to think about this. We go for the snaps because we want to clear the back row anyways. And this baits out the Book of Moon no matter what. Now we go for the heavy on that back row. Go for Swordsman and attack in to the Penguin Soldier. Clear that. Main two, go for force. We'll shuffle back their last card. And I'm feeling pretty good about this. We set a snatch pass back to our opponent. They go for Drizzly here. Attack over our Swordsman. That'll deal five. But again, I still feel really good about this. And we draw a pot. So it's getting even better. We draw two. We draw Jar and Ring. And that should do it. We go for Snatching. We go for Tribe. Attack in for 16. And if they don't have a way to stop our Ring on the Tribe, then that's just the end of the game. And they will just summon up Breaker. We can ring the Breaker as well. And that will be the end of the game there. So very, very good stuff. Showing the grind game that this deck can have. Um, but we're going to go into game three. Hopefully we can pull it out for a win with the creator here. And this is a very, very good hand. We got BLS, Pot, and Creator. Unfortunately, Forceful will shuffle back the Pot, which is what we really need to get this hand going. Also, they know about the Heavy now, so they're not going to play into it. So it's kind of rough. We draw Zalug. Uh, we're just going to set this heavy pass back to them. We could have potentially come into the Zalug to board. Um, maybe I should have done that. Just set the Zalug. They've got to bait it out some way. It gets a dark engraved, so that's something. But I want to save the Zalug for after they've gone for a big play. We can smashing their monster and then attack him with Zalug there. So uh, I also want to bluff that, you know, that set might not be a heavy because they do know about the heavy in hand. So, you know, if they don't see a summon a monster, maybe they figure that, you know, we didn't set heavy. Unfortunately, gets punished by the Mobius here. They're going to set one pass back to us. But now we can smash the Mobius and get in with the Zalug. So we summon another Zalug. That's going to be fine. We smash the Mobius, get in for 14. Uh, this will potentially get a Dark Engrave as well. They book down the Zalug. But ultimately, that's fine. You know, 1500 defense is pretty decent. Uh, if they've got an Abyss Soldier, that's annoying. But it gets a Dark Engrave potentially. They're just going to bounce it back, though, figuring that, you know, we don't really have a way to deal with it. And they, they are correct. And also, that is a good play because if they had just attacked over Zalug, then we could have gone for Tribe, pitched the Creator, popped the Abyss Soldier and the Tribe, and then gone for BLS. So that would have been a bit all in, but it gives us more options there. We draw Pot again. So, you know, very good here. We draw two there. We draw Breaker, which is very nice. We got to think about exactly what to do here. We could just summon up Breaker, pop the token, and just leave it in attack. They kind of have to attack over it, or else they give us another pop. But that does open us up to a risky spot. Because they just bounce back the Breaker with the Serpent and then bring in another monster and get in for a ton of damage. That's very rough for us. So I do just go for Breaker. They've got Ring for that, though. So now they deal at 16. And now we are very likely dead. Not really much we can do here. If they've got any other way to get a monster on board um, besides the Serpent, then we do just lose the game. So they will go for the Abyss, though. And so it looks like they don't have a way to get lethal here. So that's very good for us. We do kind of just got to get aggressive here, though, um, because we can't afford to not because we're just so close to death. We go for Banish, Banish, and now we think about whether to bring out the BLS in defense or attack. We just bring out a defense as a chump blocker. We don't want to play in like Saku or anything like that. If they've got a way to deal with BLS on their turn, then we lose either way. But I have to do this, I feel. They go for a creature swap here for the BLS. And if it had actually been an attack, we would have lost the game there. So kind of kind of a funny um, result of us bringing it out in defense. Unfortunately, that knock won't quite do it. We set the Don to Lug just to wall up a little bit here, but it is not going to be good for us. They bring out this uh, BLS and attack, attack into both of our sets, clear those. But yeah, now we're in a bad spot because any... Mo oh, okay, Exiled Force is something. We can bring that out, pop the BLS. Uh, if we draw Creator Incarnate later, we got a way to bring back that BLS. That's something, but they've got Heavy for our back row, and that's not good if they're going for Heavy. They, they've got Grizzly, and that will be the end of the game. So we didn't lose, lose this one. Uh, the Creator bricked us a little bit in this final game here uh, because we didn't really have many playable monsters there, but I do think that this was ultimately a fine showing for the deck there, and that does happen. I feel like, you know, the Water deck had a major chokehold on this final game here. So I'm not really sure even if we were playing a deck with less bricks, if things would have worked out differently. But this wasn't the only game that I got with the creator deck because it was so cool. I wanted to show it off some more. So let's dive into that one now. Here we got our final game against Hoy, another frequent guest on the channel. We are going to dive in to the games here and they will win the Rock, Paper, Scissors. So they will be going first here. So this is a pretty good opening hand. The jars can draw us deeper into things. You know, we got Dawn, we got Force, we got Knock. So we got options for whatever they really want to do here. We're just going to bring out the Exile Force, pop the tomato, because I feel like we're in a good spot if we can get in with the Dawn and start hitting. I maybe should have just hit the Jar. That might have been the correct move in hindsight, just to shovel everything back. But I kind of want to see how the game plays out a bit more before going for the Jar. They might also have outs to the Jar, and I want to save the Jar for a late game push. So uh, they are going to go for Rota here, so I'm very glad I did not set the Jar. And they're going to grab a Cliff the Trap Remover. 
So they're going to bring out that cliff, attack in. Luckily, these jars are both chainable, so we will just use them. And before the cliff hits in, draw two, and that is really good. We got the creator incarnate and the creator all ready to go here. And they are going to mill two. Oftentimes, you don't necessarily mill two, but, um, you know, it is an option you can go for. Against this deck in particular, I'm very happy that they mill two, because now we've got more options in Grave. We got Coffee here as well. We're going to go for the Dawn instead of the creator play. I think I could have gone for the creator play. I think I should have maybe gone for the creator play because this plays into like Blast with Chain. It plays into a bunch of things here. So I think maybe I should have just gone for the creator. But bring out the Dawn, they've got to answer this. So if they've got an answer that could deal with the creator as well, then I think it's better to get it baited out on the Dawn there. And they do have Ring. So I am glad that I went for Dawn instead of the creator because Ring would have popped the creator there as well. We go for Comfy, get a peek at their hand. They've got Dawn, Assure Priest, and Break. That was a bit of a tricky one. I do send the break because break is another answer to creator, but Don could also pitch the creator incarnate out of hand, which would be very annoying. If they do do that, we've got fiber jar though, so we can always go for that sort of play. But yeah, it's just kind of a rough spot to be in for sure. And our opponent is going to bring out the Assure Priest here, attack in for 29. So I'm very glad they didn't bring out the Dawn to, you know, rip a card out of our hand. Because now we can potentially go for some plays. They set a card, which I assume is a call. We draw Book, which is very good as well. We go for the Creator Incarnate here. Uh, tribute that for a Creator there. And now we're going to pitch this Fiber Jar because we are not really in a position to use it. And we bring out this Don's Luke. Now this is a little bit awkward because they do have a Sure Priest to clear the Luke, But it's really the best option we had in our graveyard at the point. Lily's dead. You know, we could have brought out Exile of Force, but that just clears the monster as opposed to dealing damage as well. We really want to get in ripping cards out of their hand. We ripped their Don, which I'm happy about. And we set this book pass back to our opponent. They are going to think about this a bit. And they're going to bring out a Tribe. And they're going to use... Thunder, uh, calling Pryo. We do have the book to save our creator there. And now they can just attack in to the creator in main two and then, or in battle phase, and then main two pitch another card for the tribe. But then that's sort of going all in on that. And I'm okay with them doing that. They don't have a flip monster in grave, so they can't get back anything with Night of Seal. So I'm mostly fine with this. They do go for a call on a tomato here. And that's a bit scary if they're going for the call now. They attack the tomato into the Zalug here. And that will indeed get out a Scientist from deck, which is quite unfortunate. Scientists will be able to suck up our creator with the Thousand Eyes Trick. So maybe that's an argument for going for the Exile instead of the Dawn there. Um, you know, maybe that would have potentially been better. But either way here, we're in a tough spot because they can just attack into our creator with the Tribe and then Pitch. And it's still a good spot for them because we don't have anything uh, on board at that point. We do have Call, which is something. The awkward thing about Call, though, is that we can't bring back the creator. We can't just filter someone from the grave. So, yeah, we're in a tough spot here for sure. They'd go for Scientist if they bring out, like, Senshi. That doesn't really stop us here, so I'm fine with that. So, as long as they don't bring out one more card, then we are fine. But, unfortunately, they do indeed bring out a Dark Balter here as well. And, yeah, that should be the end of the game. Because even if we call here, they just attack over it with Balter. And that should be enough damage to kill us here. We bring out the Lily. Maybe they'll forget that we have less than 2,000 life points, but they do not. So, that will be the end of the game there. So, very intense game one. Um, you know, maybe if we had not gotten the Dawn again, again, gotten the Exiled, maybe things would have worked out differently, but I do think that we were probably dead there either way based on our draws and what our opponent had. So yeah, I think that it was kind of going to be a lose-lose situation there no matter what. But we draw a pretty good opener here. I mean, again, we opened the Creator and the Creator Incarnate. And even though we hadn't opened the Creator Incarnate, we have the Rota here. Three Creators in decks, so and this isn't the most unlikely hand that you'll see. Because basically you're, you're playing three of the creators and four of the creator incarnates with the Rotas and the creator incarnate. So you're very likely to see some combination of those um, in the opener or like very early in the game. So our opponent's going to copy, send the um, reinforcing the army there. This does allow us to bring out the creator, but this means that they likely have a way to clear the creator, which is probably why they did that. So they're going to attack in for 14, and then they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a TT, which is okay, but if we want to set the creator, it's a bit less good. So we're just going to bring out the Creator Incarnate, go for the Creator here. Because again, you know, like, they probably have some way to deal with this, but we might as well bait it out now, right? We got the TT to uh, sort of do things after they've cleared the Creator. But uh, yeah, we're just going to use the Creator's effect now. We get basically free card advantage here um, by pitching the Serpent. And we're going to bring out this Creator Incarnate in defense because Tomato can't get over it. And also, you know, we don't want something to happen where they crash the Tomato in and get a Scientist out again. So uh, I feel like this is fine. We just pass back to them. Don't really want to commit TT into this board because we don't want to lose our creator and our creator incarnate there. And hopefully we get a more powerful monster later. They're going to set one pass back to us. We add back this serpent here. And, you know, we don't have anything to bring back this time. So 
Um, you're just going to switch the creator in card into attack, attack into that set there. This might be a bit greedy, but now that we have the book, we can protect the creator because if they bring a scientist in the battle phase, we can book down the scientist and then they can't flip it back up again. So unfortunately, the Knight Assailant, Knight Assailant will be able to pop the creator there. So now we are fine setting the TT here because if they bring another monster, we are fine. Just, you know, losing the creator incarnate. They just set one pass back to us. And luckily for us, we've got the creator again. So we're going to think about this. We just go for it again. You know, it's kind of awkward into TT, but while we have the creator incarnate on the field, we might as well use it. So we are going to pitch this serpent again, get back the creator incarnate again, just having a body on field. We're going to set the MST pass back to them. They bring out a tribe, so tribe will be able to deal with our thunder here. We go for book on the creator here, but again, this is kind of awkward because if we had set our other book, then we would have been fine here because then they can't attack in with the tribe, flip up our creator, and then, you know, deal with it again. But as is, it's kind of rough. But they choose not to do that. They just set attack into the creator incarnate. And this tells me that they probably have a way to stop the creator from attacking in and doing some really gnarly stuff here. We go for pop, we draw call and the heavy here, which is a bit awkward because we would have liked to heavy this board, but we don't want to lose our powerful uh, torrential tribute there. So I am going to just save off on the heavy a bit. We go for creator with prio, pitch the serpent, bring back the creator incarnate here. And now if they've got Saku, you know, we can clear the tribe either way. And also again, you know, our TT is looking a bit better at that point. So we attack in to the tribe. They let that go through. So we're just going to set this book pass back to our opponent. We also had a book if they had like Saku or something. But again, that makes it a bit awkward into like the tomato crashing in. They bring out a Kaiku here. They attack in to the creator inc uh, incarnate. And we choose actually to book a moon down the Kaiku because we really don't want to lose this serpent. We are fine losing the creator engrave, but the serpent just getting the continual cards back is very, very good. So maybe that was a bit of a mistake. Maybe I could have lost the Serpent and been fine, but I do think it's just better to set it down now. We draw Snatch, which is pretty good. We head back Serpent. Unfortunately, we don't have a lethal line here. I was thinking like, well, okay, what if we heavy Snatch the Tomato and then get in for 39, but that doesn't quite do it. And it's not worth having the Snatch um, on a Tomato. So we just attack in. They don't have Mirror Force because they didn't use it last time. So we're just going to attack in with the Creator Incarnate just in case they've got like a Saku or something to clear our other Creator Incarnate. And we're going to choose not to attack into the Tomato. We're just going to switch that Creator Defense pass back to them. They've got a pot here. They'll draw two. And they're going to set one, set another, set another, and then go for a Mirage. That's very annoying, but we've got the MST for the Mirage. And now we're feeling a bit better about this. Now we probably could TT the board, or not TT, Heavy Storm the board if we wanted to. Instead, we're just going to switch this Creator Incarnate to Defense, set a Jar, set a Heavy pass back to them. Uh, I feel pretty good about this. You know, this baits them into potentially setting even more back row. And also, you know, if they do try and do something here, we do have the TT. Then we can sort of jar and then heavy them uh, on the crackback. So I feel very good about this. They go for snatch, honor the creator, switch it to attack, switch the tomato to attack as well. They get in over the creator incarnate, go in for 14. We will unfortunately have this take that 14. And then they go for call on the kaiku. That is fine by us. Because now we can TT the board away. Clear all that out of the way and we hit a fiber jar as well which is very nice so it seems like they would have gone for just a fiber jar flip in main one but instead of that because they had the opportunity to deal more damage with snatching the creator it made sense to go for that which i do think made a lot of sense um and they went for the call for you know even further extension banish cards from our grave before going for the fiber jar play so i think that made a lot of sense there unfortunately it gets hard punished by the exact cards that we have here we're gonna go for jar draw a card we're gonna go for heavy rip away those back row there bring out the creator incarnate attack in for 16 and right now the creator incarnate is really just like a 1600 body at this point but it's 1600 is kind of annoying to deal with we got the saku and the call so you know we're feeling very good about this we have snatch deal as well if they somehow have a way to get through all that so they're just going to set one pass back to us. We bring out Breaker, try and pop that back row. It will indeed go through. It was a right Geki break, but they're going to choose not to pop one of our cards here. Seems like the hand was BLS, so makes sense why they didn't do that. Uh, unfortunately, they do not have, you know, a Light Engrave, so they can't bring it out. But this will be lethal damage because we get in for 32, and then we do have this call here. So even if they had Raigeki breaked one of our cards here, we are still in a very, very good spot because, again, you know, we got the call to bring back uh, damage later. We've got the Saku to deal with an attack. We got Snatch to deal with a monster that they'd have. So we were winning this game like nine times out of ten um, from this position. So very, very good stuff there. And we are going to go into the third game, the all important game three. And. Hopefully the creator will be able to bring it out. I mean, I think that second game really showed how much grind game the deck can have if it's got Serpent and the creator. Just keep bringing back materials, and it can be really annoying for your opponent to deal with. It also showed the benefit of playing three creators, so that way you have redundancy in your deck in case they clear your first one. 
Our opponent is going to open by setting three and passing. They're going to dust shoot us here, so that's quite annoying. Luckily, we do have this painful, so that can send some things back. They send back the exiles. That, to me, tells me that, like, they do not want us to clear that set. So we're going to go for painful. We're going to send a bunch of ways to clear that set. We're going to send knock, double rota. We're going to send a change of heart and a mystic sword from level two. So we left an exiled in deck. They do know about that. So, you know, we could have sent an exiled instead of mystic sword from level two to make them more likely to give us the rota. And then we search out mystic sword from level two, hit over their set that way. But I prefer actually getting the exiled to hand because they've got a battle trick. I want to know about it. So by sending the mystic sword from level two, if they give us that, then that tells us that they do have a battle trick there. And then we can sort of play around that as we see fit. Uh, they give us, though the rota which tells me that they don't have a battle trick set so that is good to know for the future we go for the rota now we add back that exile and we just pop the set because i mean this could have been a big mind game on their part to have us go for this sort of play waste our painful waste our exiled and pop a saying and actually there's no saying in a witch so you can't even do that but this could be a card like serpent or something right which it doesn't really matter if we exiled it but luckily for us, it was indeed a live card. It was a new Doria there. And we're going to forceful back anything else they might have in hand. So we see their hand. We see they've got a Kaiku, a Premat, a Ring, and a Blade Knight there. A bit tough. We don't necessarily have a way to get them off a big beater here. So what I actually want to do is I'm going to send back that Ring. And I think Ring is the best thing to send back there because it's more damage later. It's removal as well. And it's unfortunate because now our opponent can get in with the Kaiku, banish cards from Grave, which is rough. But I do have Tribe to deal with that. I've got Lily to deal with that. Again, I don't think the set is a battle trick because they didn't use it before. Or they didn't give us the Swordsman. So I feel fine doing this. They are going to go for Premad here. Bring back the new Doria. Sit on that. And then get in for 12. So it seems like they're trying to get me to use up the Tribe here first. Or just attacking the new Doria. Lose a card here to it. So I think that makes sense from their part. Uh, we also do know about the pre -mount, so, you know, we could potentially have an MST for that later, and they want to use it while the using is good. We draw a call, which is really, really good, though. We go for Tribe here, and we pitch the Kaiku, get over that nude. We can always bring back Kaiku with Call the Haunted later, but by keeping the Injection Fairy Lily here, we have a way to stop their Blade Knight, we have a way to stop their Kaiku, so I think it is better to just preserve this. Um, again, the call could bring back the Lily as well, but if they do have a way to deal with the call, which again, they don't have a battle trick set, so they could have like an MST or something, I think it is better to keep the Lily in hand. So they do have heavy, so that is also a way to clear the call. And now they're going to bring out this Kaiku, get over the tribe, and that will banish an Exiled Force and a Mr. Sword from level 2 from Grave. Quite unfortunate, we would like to keep those around. They draw into a Mirage, so now they'll draw 3 here, but they might not necessarily have a good way to deal with that Mirage. So they might be losing a bunch of cards here in the future. We go for upstart, drawing into a heavy. We don't necessarily want to use the heavy now. We're going to bring out this Lily. Attack over the Kaiku. Deal 16. And I could go for heavy here, but again, you know, then they're getting a lot of value off that. So I just set the heavy. I figure over the course of this Mirage, if they don't have the MST, then they'll be setting more back row here. And we'll get a better heavy later. So they're going to uh, pick or keep two. So we have them send a tribe, a tomato, and a tomato. We still know about the Blade Knight in hand. We don't know what the other new card is. But Blade Knight does not out the Lily. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a Dawn here, and that's really good, because now what we can do, it will cost us some life points, but we can attack over their set with the Lily, get in with Dawn, and then, you know, rip even more cards out of their hand. So I feel like it is just the better play to do. They do have the TT for that, though, so that will clear our board. But this does keep us a bit higher on life points than we would be otherwise. So I'm not too upset about that. And again, they are discarding cards here for Mirage. So they lose a change of heart, a Blade Knight, and a Knight Assailant. Unfortunately, they don't have any flips in Grave for the Knight Assailant. So that won't be able to trigger. And they could draw a Knight Assailant later that gets pitched off Mirage and then get that back later. But, you know, as is, I'm feeling pretty good about this. We draw into a Saku as well. So they're going to draw three yet again. Again, I don't really feel the need to heavy their boards. So we're just going to set the Saku pass. They go for break on the Mirage. That is a way to deal with this finally. They're going to pitch a dead dust shoot. So that is perfectly fine by us. They are going to think about this a bit, and they're going to go for a Kaiku here. They're going to attack in with the Kaiku. We do have the Saku for that, and that will clear that. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw a ring. We're going to set the ring pass back to them. So we're in the, sort of the grind game, but we do have a very good card for the grind game ring. And also we do have heavy in case they decide to set more as well. They go for Cliff here. They attack in for 12. We will ring that because, you know, we don't want to lose one of our back row. And, you know, we do drop down a bit lower in life, but they also drop lower. They unfortunately do have the call. So maybe sending the heavy earlier wouldn't, wasn't the right play, but uh, unfortunately they will be able to pop our heavy and we won't be able to deal with the call now. So that is quite rough. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw the Creator Incarnate. We're just going to bring that out and try attacking in. If they got Saku, they got Saku. We got to go through that eventually. And luckily it does go through. So we managed to clear the cliff. 
they will go for painful here. That's a bit rough for us. They're going to send coffee, dust shoot, Raigeki break, Raigeki break, and serpent. And now, this is a very interesting decision here. I normally when people send serpent off painful, I give them the serpent because, you know, they're going to get back the serpent eventually anyways. And so it doesn't really make sense not to give it. But given the dust shoot is just hard dead here, especially because I can just play around it constantly. And there's no real way for me to get four cards in hand. I do think I should give them the dust shoot's the correct choice. If they don't have a monster in hand, then we can attack him for 16. And at this point in the game, when life points are so low, that's really, really good. And also, you know, if they do have a monster in hand, now at least we know it's not Serpent. So we can sort of play around that a little bit. So I'm going to give them the dead dust shoot. Yes, this is more discard fodder if they've got more discard trap, but giving them the Serpent is free discard fodder anyway. So I don't really think it matters that much. They're going to set one pass back to us. I know it's not the Serpent now. So I, I'll just attack into it, see what it is. And it is the Dawn. So maybe I should have set the book in case it was Morphing Jar or something, but I think it's fine going for this. I don't think they're on Morphing Jar. And if they are, you know, it draws them deeper. Now, the biggest fear here and the reason why they went for that painful is because they could easily get a BLS here. BLS just ends the game. So it is rough. Uh, if they do draw into that, then we are in a really tough spot. But as is, they're just going to go for Rota on the Dawn, deck thing a little bit, setting one pass back to us. I feel like that probably is the Serpent. We're going to go for Pot Draw 2. Ooh, we draw BLS of our own. Unfortunately, we don't have a Light Engrave. Creator Incarnate is a Light. So now we can sort of try and get more aggressive here and maybe try and get them to use removal on the Creator Incarnate to get that Light Engrave for our BLS. We're going to set this uh, Sacred to Armor there, pass back to them. They've got Forceful set there. Shuffling back our BLS, which is unfortunate. We would have liked that BLS to have come up, um, but unfortunately it did not. They're going to set one. We draw the creator, so that's really nice, but we don't necessarily want to commit it to board right now. Because if our creator incarnate sticks around a bit, then that's pretty good. It'd be Tekken for 16 every turn. If they clear it, it gets a light and grave. But I really don't feel like we have a way to capitalize off the creator, given our current grave, because we can't do anything with that. We don't want to lose the creator. So maybe I should have just brought it up because we do have this Book of Moon set to protect the creator from a variety of threats. But if they do bring up BLS, I don't want to lose the creator to that. So I would rather just keep this in hand. I deck into the set. It is a cliff. They're going to, or we're going to pass back to them. They're going to add that Serpent to hand yet again. So I, I think they might have forgotten to add the Serpent last time. But we draw BLS now, and this is really good. We can go for the creator, incarnate, bring out the creator. And now we can banish the Light and Dark from Grave to bring out this BLS here. Uh, I could banish the set with the BLS, keep it on field, and then, you know, attack him with the Creator Incarnate, or just with the Creator. But they have not used Snatch Steel yet. So what I'm figuring is, like, if the set is nothing, then attacking him with BLS wins the game, right? If the set is something, then they probably have to clear the BLS here if they're going to clear anything. And if they clear the BLS, then they can't Snatch it, right? I mean, we got booked for Snatch anyways, so maybe I should have just banished, but I feel like this is still better. This threatens lethal, and I can always bring back the BLS next turn with the creator if they don't uh, pop the creator. So uh, I am fine just tagging him for 23. I feel like we're, we've got a very, very resilient board state here. They go for Snatch, honor the creator. We've got the book for that, and they're going to set two pass back to us. We draw Jar of Greed here. We're just going to flip up the creator, and we're going to pitch the Jar, get back that BLS, banish the set with the BLS, and this should probably be enough to win the game here. And indeed, it is enough. Uh, the set could have been Saku, so there is a reason. There is potentially a world where we go for that, but it could have also been Mirror Force, and we don't necessarily want to play into that a bit. No, Mirror Force is banned. It couldn't have been Mirror Force. So if it was Saku, then maybe we should have just brought up the BLS to attack, attacked in that way, because then we win the game, like, guaranteed through a lot of stuff. But there is still one Night Assailant not accounted for. There could be playing multiple New Dorians as well. So we don't necessarily want to uh, risk that, especially when we got the game shot here. But then again, if it was Night Assailant or New Dory, we win by attacking with BLS. So I actually should have attacked with BLS here. That was a misplay on my part. I guess I'm playing around Cyber Jar maybe, but yeah, it was a misplay on my part. Anyways, I hope that this game showed how cool the creator deck can be, how much of a grind game it can have, and how hard it can be for your opponent to deal with. You know, there are some things that can do it. But if you just are able to set up the creator, you know, get the loop going, then it's really good. Also, even in top deck wars later on, while the creators can be bricks, you know, if you are able to set up the creator in a top deck war, it is very, very good for you because there isn't much your opponent can do against it without more setup. So very, very cool card. Very, very good deck list. Credit to Mshove for bringing this to a tournament and winning with it. And I'm really happy I got to show it off more on the channel. So I hope you enjoyed this video as always. If you do enjoy this content, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. And I'd really like to reach 1,300 subscribers by the end of the month. And we're almost there. So you doing that can help us get there. 
In addition, if you want to support me directly, I do have a Patreon link in the description down below. If you join that, you'll be shouted out in these videos. So big shout outs to Bren Doctor, Pork Chef Coon, GMYFS, Tyler Compton, Dump Truck, and Rincewind. It really means a lot that you all support me in this way, and it really encourages me to make more videos like this. Also, you know, let me know your thoughts on the creator deck down in the comments below. And if you want to play games in this format or any other format that I featured on the channel, check out the YJO from Zero Discord server, which is also linked in the description down below. But I hope you enjoyed it as always. And until next time, I've been Ben from YJO from Zero, and I'm signing off.